Hello there and welcome back. Now from corporations transforming to transformation in space. That's what we're really going to be looking at right now. And we're going to be looking at insights from space that will really help us when it comes to meeting the SDGs. This is what's absolutely important. Um, I'm joined now by the director of the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs. And joining me is Simonetta de Pipo. Simonetta, I'm absolutely delighted that you've taken the time to join us. And I'm really looking forward to our conversation. So much going on when we think about what's happening in space, when we think about all of the great operations, the, the work that has been done in space, in fact, and what it has enabled us even now in terms of what we do. So it's, um, there we are. Simonetta, lovely to see you. Hi. Hi. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you so much for being with us. And I think, you know, there's a lot more focus on space indeed than there was before. I think that is without a doubt. And you've been working with the agency, you know, for several years. Talk to me perhaps a little bit about the great changes that you are seeing now. And I suppose the, the great attention that we're seeing put on space. And again, putting it in terms of sustainability and what it can actually do. I think the frontiers that are out there, it's a very, very exciting topic for just about everybody. Yeah, well, for sure, it's it's quite an exciting time, and uh, and talking about sustainability in in space is absolutely mandatory. It is it is so today, but it was also uh, true in the past. Uh, so uh, we at the Office for Outer Space Affairs, we are really following all the developments. Uh, I mean, throughout uh, I mean all the corners and the on the globe. Uh, and we are really trying to uh, be the platform for exchanging of views, ideas, proposals, and agreements uh, involving all the main stakeholders in, in the space business worldwide. Um, and we also uh, serve the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Other Space, which was indeed, together with the office, created back in 1958, at the very beginning of the uh, of the space, uh, of the space, uh, you know, era. Uh, clearly, a lot has been changing. Uh, in particular, because at the very beginning, it was mainly an activity funded by with public uh, money, so by governments, and mainly by the two main uh, spacefaring countries at that time: Soviet Union and the United States. Now we have more than 80 countries having a satellite in orbit and having had the satellite in orbit at least once. Uh, and uh, this is extremely interesting because on top of the fact that uh, we see an increasing number of satellites launched, in particular in low Earth orbit, we also see, and, and we are really instrumental for this, we see uh, uh, an increasing number of countries using space and space-based data and infrastructures to improve the quality of life of their own citizens. And we do a lot in this field because our motto is exactly bringing the benefits of space to everyone everywhere. So what we do is really to train and support emerging and developing countries to take the maximum benefits from space-based data. This is extremely important in a moment in which Space is becoming key in everything we do, from climate change to biodiversity to tele-education, food and water security, um, monitor uh, monitoring of uh, crops, etc. So it's really, really across the board, the 17 SDGs that we're mentioning. And again, I think that's very, very exciting to hear this so much, but I don't think... Um let's say regular people really fully understand that. I mean, your background, you're an astrophysicist. For you, this is, this is simple stuff. This is easy stuff. But how do you get communities and how do you build, I suppose, that trust around? And also, how do you actually sort of tell people about that space-based infrastructure that you talk about that can actually be of benefit to, to me and my colleagues here in the studio and to other countries around the world and countries also that probably would not have had any focus or attention in space before. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're fully right. It's, it's a long process. It cannot be done in one step only. The first step is usually when you have a, a potential stakeholder, someone from a user community, which is not 
using space because they don't know that space can be benefit, can can bring benefits to to what they do. I mean, I'm thinking about uh, farmers, for example, uh, or or other other categories of uh, user communities uh, which need uh, to uh, first understand the importance of space and what space-based data can do for, for them. So uh, the first step of activities that we do is really to try to increase awareness of the importance of space. And in particular, we do that with uh, developing and emerging countries. We do technical uh, missions where we go uh, uh, I mean, in the place, in the country, uh, with a group of experts led by us and we um, interview uh, government representatives or user communities representatives to understand the kind of problems they have so that we can present potential space-based solutions which are really customized to their needs. As you can imagine, this is not a one-day process. It's a process that takes a bit of time, uh, but it's also quite stable because in particular, I don't know, in the field of uh, disaster management and emergency response, where you can use satellite-based data quite a lot, in particular in the emergency response phase. Uh, well, we have been able to bring uh, countries to include space imagery uh, in their standard operation procedures in the emergency response phase, which means that, uh, okay, it took a bit of time, a few years, uh, a certain number of meetings, a certain number of training courses, but uh, it's step by step, but it works quite well. To answer your second question, how you uh, can get convinced that, um, I mean, for the public, that space is so important. Well, I'm always saying, let's think about one day without satellites. Well, first of all, you cannot check, uh, I mean, just few examples, very basic. You cannot check which kind of weather is, 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 is expecting you during the day because you don't have access to meteorological satellites. Satellites. You cannot use your navigator in your car, for example, and, I mean, if you have to go somewhere because, uh, you know, it's, it's based on constellation of satellites, global navigation satellite systems. Well, you cannot even take money from an ATM machine because it's regulated and, and, yes. and coordinated through an atomic clock, which is based in space, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I could make 24 hours of examples yes. of how space is really, and I'm not, not, not doing this, don't worry, <laughs> uh, but just to say that everything we do, even if we don't know that, yes. uh, is based on space. And indeed, all of that can actually help us then with the bigger picture. The data we get help with sustainability. Um, this is a quick little interview, and I have time for one more quick question. With so much going on in space, and I think we're seeing so many countries and so many visitors and that, who's, who's policing space? I mean, we look at, you know, the, the space debris, so to speak. There's a lot of activity, and we hear about a lot of satellites floating around. So um, who's policing it, and, you know, how about making sure that it is it's clean and it's safe for everybody, the sustainability in space alone. So let's finish on that one. Yeah, that, that's really the main question of these very days. Um, there are already, I mean, the treaties principles uh, approved a long time ago by the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Other Space, uh, but also recently the long-term sustainability guidelines. So we really work a lot with all the players in order to support them in, in really having a, a responsible behavior in space. Um, we have to think about space as global common, which means that we need to work uh, to maintain space for future generations because it's really benefiting everyone everywhere. So we are doing a lot in particular. Uh, there is a new report issued by the Secretary General called, uh, of the UN called Our Common Agenda. And we are working towards a summit uh, for the future, which will take place in September 2023, where uh, one of the high level tracks will be space and in particular space traffic management and global governance for future space activities. So we are really working hard in trying to bring everyone on the same on the same path, and I'm I'm really working most of my time on this. So hopefully we will make it in a couple of years. Well, we're very encouraged to hear your message, and again, and thank you for for making it so clear. I think for all of us, I think it is 
the fact that uh, you know many of us feel that uh, we, we're, we're not quite touched by space, but as you say, it is so important to everything we do. And again, when we look at the wider sustainability picture, it is absolutely vital to make sure that we're all on the right absolutely. track. Simonetta de Pipo, thank you so much for taking the time. We're um, very inspired by what you have to say. Keep up the good work and we'll stay in touch. Thanks so much. Okay. Thank you so much.